Howdy everyone, Joe here, and we're going to explore today both the power and the fun of masking in Lightroom, and not just using masks, but how you can add and subtract to them to really change the light and color in an image to help get your viewer get to where you want them to go. Now this is a shot of a part of Bryce Canyon called the Mossy Cave side. In fact, let's get rid of the left side panel so we got some more screen real estate. And obviously this thing is the star of the show, but see all of this light stuff over here? It's so bright that it takes you away. So we want to fix that. Yes, by the way, I understand that this is relatively small in the frame for this image to work. I think it would have to be a fairly decent sized print. However, that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's fix where you take a look. So I'm going to start up in the masking panel, this thing right up here, with a linear gradient. And again, remember, linear gradient is M, of course. What else would it be? Uh, radial gradient is Shift M and brush is K. You're going to use those a lot. We're going to do a linear gradient. And I'm going to click just outside of this brightest thing and drag diagonally across the image. And if you're not really familiar with these things, what's going on is from the red dot to the black square in the middle will fade whatever effect you choose over in the sliders from 100% to 50%. Everything behind this red dot will be at 100%. From the black square to the white dot will fade from 50 to 0. So there's really nothing going on here. However, I've got everything selected except I've also got the sky. And I... I really don't want the sky to get affected. So we come up to the panel and you'll see there's a subtract and an add underneath. If you don't see it, by the way, just click on the mask. It should pop up again. I'm going to click on subtract until it selects sky. And look at that. The sky's gone. It's been taken out of the mask. Now we can do our thing. So I mentioned the highlights were too bright. Well, let's just go ahead and bring them down. As soon as we do that, we lose the uh, the overlay of the mask and it's okay that's brought the brightness down I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more and something else you can do when you don't want people going to it is bring down the saturation a smidge so I'm gonna do that I might decide might change my mind on that however by doing that it did make it somewhat flatter so I am going to bring up the contrast a bit I'm going to add some more blacks in to kind of emphasize the shadows and as I'm looking at the color, and actually, if anything, it looks maybe a little too yellow. So I'm going to add a little blue into it, which will take that out. Yeah, that's starting to look better. And I see some other places I want to fine tune as well, but it's, it's a little better. In fact, when you come up here into the masking panel, you'll see a little eyeball shows up next to the three dots. So we can hold that in and you can see the before and after. So see what's just, that's what we just did. So now this is less of an eye attractor. And we're going we're gonna to go back in here and work on that. Now, same thing over here. We've got the opposite going on. We've got some very deep shadows. Could I get the brush and do it? Sure. But let's go ahead and do it the same way. I'm just going to hit the M key to give me another uh, gradient and select like over here. And once again, we have the same problem that we've got the sky as part of it. So I'm going to subtract the sky from that. There's the sky's gone. However, I also think I like this part under here. So I'm going to subtract this with a brush. So I'll click on subtract and say brush and just come over in here. I've got auto mask on. I'm going to actually turn it off. Yeah, because I, I kind of want that to stay stay in the darker side. So now we've just got the basically the trees and the shrubs on the right hand side of the image. So let's go ahead, bring up the shadows now. Oh, that looks, be that looks better already. And in fact, I like the color temperature of it as well. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit enter on that. And again, we can click on the eyeball this time on the right side and see there's the before and after. Look how that's all been lit up. Again, we made to change our minds on some things. In fact, I still think parts over here are still too light. So we're going to do some more individual light painting on this to help that along. So let's do a new mask. And this time we're going to use the brush, which is K, the letter K. So I simply hit K. Uh, I've got 
auto mask turned off, which means it's just going to kind of roughly paint wherever I go. And I'm looking at the spots that I think are still maybe a little too bright. Now I'm going to turn on auto mask because I want to get up into these bushes and trees a little bit. I think maybe these are here over in the corner are still a little bit too bright. In fact, I'm even going to select the, the uh, pine needles in that, that tree up in there. So I think that's good. So let's bring the exposure down on that. Oh yeah, that needed that. In fact, I'm going to make the blacks a little more intense in there as well. Now, as I've done that, I think maybe the spots that I had done before now I've got maybe a little too dark. That's okay. I can hit enter on this and go back to our original mask and all of our settings are still there. So I can decide, well, okay, I don't need to bring the exposure down as much now. Let's bring that up a little bit. And another way I can darken that but add contrast at the same time is I will add both some clarity and a little bit of dehaze, which will bring in a little bit of depth. All right, pretty good. Now we may do some cropping as well, but again, we'll get to that. I think the foreground is pretty good. Uh, our subject is pretty good, but are there still too many distractions? So let's try a crop. I'm going to hit R, which is the cropping tool. I also, by the way, have the golden ratio set for my crop. I much prefer the golden ratio over the rule of thirds. I just find that for landscape work, I think it's better. If I was using rule of thirds, my third line would be way over here, and that would mean it would want the subject on that. And by the way, to get that, you go to Tools, Crop Guide Overlay, and here's Golden Ratio, which was what I used. That said, I think maybe there's a little too much over on the left. Let's see what happens. Do we need this one big tree up in the corner? Or is it just a distraction? The same thing with this little tower here. It's maybe a distraction. So what happens if we come in here Oh, I think we're starting to get, I think we're starting to get a stronger composition. Now, I like this rock right here. And one of the rules in composition, and again, I am not a rule follower with this stuff. One of the rules they say, oh, never put your subject in the center. Well, I say no. Sometimes you want to put the sub your subject in the center. In fact, I see this one little rock here. If you're going to include something, include it. So I'm going to have that a little bit as well. It's okay that this... One little piece of rock stays. And, oh yeah, that's, that's a much more powerful composition. What else do we need to do? Well, let's go to Effects. Add a vignette, which is going to further darken the corners. And the question is, do we, need any, uh, do we need some kind of light path helping us to get up to the subject? Let's try it. So I'm going to hit K again. I'm going to turn off Auto Mask. And I'm going to follow the light parts here and lead it right up to our primary subject. Now, I didn't have auto mask on, so notice it's gotten into the sky a bit, and I don't want that to happen. So again, I'll just hit subtract, select sky, and there we go. Now, I think I want to bring up the, the mid-tones and leave the highlights alone. So let's bring up the exposure. Oh yeah, look what that does. Look how it helps to lead you there. Be careful, not too much. But then I'm going to bring down the highlights just a smidge. In fact, right in here, I don't like what it did there. So if I hit the O key, I can bring up the mask again. This particular rock piece right through here is already bright, and we're making it brighter. So again, I can click on Subtract with a brush. I'll make the brush smaller. I'll put on Auto Mask this time. And let's just come into here and get rid of those little sections that were already bright. Perfect. So now if we hit O to hide our mask, now they're not as much of a distraction as they were. And again, let's see it before and after, and we can see the effect of this mask. So look how that little bit of brightness kind of subliminally helps you get to the image. I think that's looking pretty good. We can hit enter and get out of there. And is there anything else I want to do? You know what? I think we're done. Let's take a look at this at full screen. All right, so here's our original panel. Yes, there were edits done to this ahead of time, but you can see as far as the light goes, this area over here is bright and it, your eye just can't go up going there. And I want to help the viewer follow the stream up to this primary subject. So with a little bit of cropping, a little bit of light, 
we converted that into that. And even though the subject is in the center, it is kind of framed by the trees on either side. And that framing is asymmetrical, which I think makes the center position of the subject work really well. Again, edit to an image that makes you happy. If that happens, then you've got a great edit. So just a little taste of some of the masking and the additions and subtractions you can make using the, the, the masking in a Lightroom Classic. It's come so far. It's made this program so powerful and so easy to use to get results that would have taken a lot of work in the past. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you online again soon. Till next time, be well. Bye-bye.